Hello there, I'm Josh with Spot Hog Archery Products. This is Santino. Uh, been working with Santino for a while, uh, and I was telling him about uh, last night we were talking about his sight's distal position, like how far the sight is out in front of the bow, and I was explaining that there's there's actually a test you can do to optimize it for what's best for you. And so I'm gonna show him the process that I do that I found has worked really, really well about being able to figure out like, am I too far out, am I too close in to optimize basically your benefits? Because obviously the farther the sight is in front of the bow, the more accurate it is. But if you get it too far out, it works against you because you can't hold steady, right? Right. And so. We want to find that spot, that sweet spot. And so we're going to do a test. And the process is going to go like this. We're going to pick a spot. We're going to draw back at, at you know, back at the range over here. But we're going to pick a distance of whatever the farthest shot that Santino feels comfortable opening fire at, at, at in a hunting situation. That's the distance we want to use. So like for me, the 70 yards has always kind of been my thing. 70 yards, if it's a, the most perfect scenario ever, I feel comfortable making that shot. But is my bow set up to optimize that. And so that's what we're gonna go through the process. So we're gonna basically aim at a spot and see how much we float on it. And if we float off, we're gonna just keep moving that side in until we can finally float the size of this spot through the entire process. And you'll see how it goes as we go through this. It's gonna, I'll, I'll explain more. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna move the side out to the farthest position possible. And we're just gonna see how steady we hold on target. The idea is that you wanna be able to keep your pin inside the spot. So as you're floating around, if you come off, you gotta be honest with yourself. Be like, no, I'm not floating the size of the spot. Um, and then at that point, we're gonna let down and we, we're just gonna keep moving it in until we finally achieve the point where we can float the size of that spot for a solid 10 seconds. Uh -huh. Let's go ahead and move it out to the full, full position forward. Right. And, and the idea is we're gonna we're gonna set it up wrong to start with, so that as we work our way into what's right, it's visually obvious that it's better. All right, so just slide it all the way to that very. So now our goal is is we're gonna draw back. You're gonna come in on the target, and you just there's a certain point you're just gonna work, you're gonna in your head you're gonna start counting one, two, three, four, five, ten seconds. Can I keep my pin? And it doesn't matter which pin you're using in this scenario. Can I keep my pin dead center in that spot for ten seconds? Got it. All right. And if you float off already, just let down, it's over. <laughs> yeah, that was probably what, seven, eight seconds? Yeah, yeah, and that's fine. Like I said, we're gonna, we're gonna start wrong. So as we work our way back, you're gonna see, oh yeah, this is better. Right. So the goal is, is now we're gonna move the side in one notch. Okay. Same process, just yep. draw back, hold. Just drawing back and seeing, can you float the size of that spot? So is without the, coming off. So is the timer essentially starting when I'm at, when I'm knocked up, nose touches the one, Once you come to full draw, you just come into the spot and once your pin's on the spot and you feel comfortable, like that, normally you put your finger on your release, start your count point at that. Got it. That was a little longer, but still floated off i could see like probably at that seven eight second mark it was getting way, a lot more wobbly okay so let's, let's sure. go another notch and one of the interesting things about this is is you might if you're super practiced up your site's gonna be way out there right but if you've taken a break you've been busy with work or this or that and you haven't been practicing you might find that you have to be a little closer um uh it's not always guaranteed like just because you, like if you set this this year and then you put your bow down for the whole season and you're getting ready for hunting season now and you just picked your bow up yeah you're not gonna have that stamina to hold steady so it, it's gonna happen where essentially you know depending on how much you're practicing you're gonna find different results for sure Same thing, kind of like the other one. I felt like that one probably happened about almost around the same time, but I felt like it was starting to move a little bit more too at the very end. Okay. Well, if you if you feel like you're floating off, then you gotta move another notch. Another notch, right. When we're at full draw, and if I'm floating on that spot, and all of a sudden, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, as things are going well, I put my finger on my release, I start squeezing. But the moment I start squeezing, all of a sudden I float off, what happens? Oh, I gotta let up on my release. Okay, now I'm back on. Okay, so I start squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Oh crap, I'm off again. Right. I'm back on again. Okay, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Oh crap, I'm off again. And what happens is eventually you get frustrated with it and what do you do? You punch it. Right. And punching it 
can work well in the beginning. We've all punched the release and we've shot okay scores or you know shot well enough that wasn't too bad. But what happens is if you can't consistently be able to just turn your release hand on and know that you can hold steady enough, eventually what happens is you get stuck in the idea of just punching the release. As you punch the release and it works for you, what are you training yourself to do? That every time your pin gets near the spot, you punch the release. That is literally the recipe for target panic. Yep. And so what we're trying to do is we're trying to set the equipment up so that you can actually dodge the entire concept of having to deal with target panic. That the moment you come on the spot, you know that I can hold on that spot for 10 seconds without floating off. I know it takes four to five seconds for my shot to go off. So therefore, the moment I come in position, I can start squeezing on the release and I don't have to worry about whether or not I'm gonna stay on that spot or not. I know I can just do a nice, calm, surprised, executed shot. Okay. And we gotta get the sight to that position where that benefits you. Yep, I think you nailed it that time, didn't you? That was it. Yeah, that was it. So. A good example is look at where your marks are at, where you were at compared to where you're, when you do the test where you're at now. Yep. You're a little tighter in. Tighter in for sure. But if you practice, 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 you're gonna build up stamina and you might end up wanting to push it out farther later on down the road. But you know, as of the, this moment right now, that is where the best spot is for you. Yep. It's awesome, man. Yeah. Little trick. Yeah. Works. Uh, it, it, it makes shooting a lot more fun when you can hold steady in the spot. Cause if you're having to punch on the way by, it's you're really pushing yourself to where you're gonna make Compromise shots, right? And if you're practicing compromise shots, what's going to happen when you're in the field? You're going to make compromise shots. Yeah. Well, and it's just creating bad habits essentially. Yeah. 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 Well, thanks, man. Appreciate it. I'm going to have to. So now that this bar is not in the original position that it was, I'm. We got to go back, check deep, just double check yeah. everything. I mean, yeah. So I always say, like, when you're setting your bow up, do this process first before you make your tape, before you set your peep sight. Do this first. Okay. 